Hi, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite soup recipes for this fall and winter. They can all be done in the crock pot and I'm also going to be sharing how I make my homemade chicken stock. That's a really cheap, easy way to make your soups super flavorful and have that deeper, richer flavor. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make chicken broth and then we'll get on to some of my other favorite soups. I'm going to show you how to make chicken broth in your crock pot. Um, this is something that's just a really, really rich bone broth flavor that you can make for like essentially free, <laughs> especially if you buy rotisserie chicken. You saw in my last grocery haul. So if you saw in my grocery hauls lately, I've been picking up rotisserie chickens just because they're a really good price for chicken right now. And I just pull off all of the already cooked meat and I save that in two cup portions in my freezer. And then we just can pull that out and use it in recipes. I don't have to cook the chicken to use in recipes. So you just need your chicken carcass. Um, I also pull off the skin when I'm pulling off the chicken meat. And so I just stick the skin in here as well. So you just need your carcass. And if you want your skins or whatever kind of chicken remains, you need those. And then you can get whatever kind of random vegetables you have in your fridge. I have half an onion that needs to get used. Some carrots that are kind of on their last legs. Some celery that got like stuck in the back of my fridge and got frozen. <laughs> so that's not super great. But it doesn't really matter when you're making broth. You can just use any of your leftovers. Also, something that I do is if I have leftover like carrot peels or onion peels or carrot or celery scraps or anything, I just stick them in a freezer bag. And then <clears throat> when I'm ready to make broth, I also can use the ones, the vegetable scraps that I have that are frozen. Um, and then just for seasonings, I like to add bay leaves, um, poultry seasoning, and garlic as well. You can add salt and pepper if you want to. Um, and then I like to add salt with whatever I'm using the chicken broth in. So that's kind of what you need. And basically what you do is you just stick it all in your crock pot and then cover it with water. So I like to keep the onion peel on. It makes your broth be like a dark brown, like rich color. Um, so if you ever want to save your onion peels, that's something that is helpful. And you don't need to really like chop any of this. You can if you want to, or if it's already chopped, go for it. Um, but I'm just going the easier route and I'm just kind of keeping things whole. In some ways that makes it easier because at the end when we strain it, um, if the things that you're putting in here are bigger, <laughs> then it's a lot easier to kind of strain and pull those out at the end. Also, if you don't have poultry seasoning, you can use pretty much whatever you want to, whatever you like. Um, I always make sure that I have onion and garlic, and then this poultry seasoning has like sage, oregano, thyme, basil, um, rosemary you can use in here as well. <clears throat> Basically things that you might use in like chicken noodle soup um, are all kind of good seasonings that you can have for chicken broth. So I'm just going to do a couple scoops of garlic. Now I'm just going to fill um, my crock pot with water so that everything gets covered. And this is an eight quart crock pot. Um, if you have a smaller crock pot, it's just going to end up making less broth. Um, so if you use the biggest crock pot um, that you have, you can also use your instant pot. You can pressure cook it. Um, I just like to do the slow cooker option, even if I am using my instant pot, just because it's easier for me just to be able to set it and then just let it let it go and do its thing. Um, so you're going to cook it on low for 12 to 24 hours. It just kind of depends on how much time you have and what you want, how rich. The longer you let it go, the richer your stock is going to be. So that ended up being 16 cups of water. And I'm just going to kind of tuck some of these things down. And you don't really have to do anything with it once it starts cooking. Um, you might just want to occasionally check to make sure that things are still covered. If you add, need to add more water, you can. Um, throughout the cooking process, but usually I just stick it on low and let it cook overnight, all day, however long I want to. So here what I'm doing is I am just going to be straining out the big chunks that we put into the broth. I like starting by using a Pyrex measuring cup. What I'm using right now is a two cup and I'm going to be using that later. So it's nice that I don't have to like wash it <laughs> multiple times. So um, I just put all the scraps in just a, like a grocery sack to throw away after I'm done using them. I have heard that some people have used their scraps multiple times. I usually don't. 
Um, I just toss them when I'm done. And then I'm going to use a ladle as it gets a little bit lower to kind of pull out some more of the scraps and just kind of let it sit in that strainer so that the liquid can go off of it. And at the end, when I get to the very bottom, um, I just use some hot pads to take the crock out and kind of dump that over the strainer. I could have done that earlier, but there was so much stuff in it. I didn't want it splashing everywhere. So I'm just going to, again, empty those scraps to get them ready to throw away. I'm shaking it to try and get all of that beautiful broth off of it. And then I'll just throw those away. And here's what the broth looks like. It's super deep, like a deep brown color. You can see that fat kind of on top. That's kind of what gives a lot of it its flavor too. So after I have that strained off, I'm just going to put it in the fridge. Um, and I usually do this with any of my batches so that if there is a lot of fat, um, it will come up to the top and it will harden. Um, in this batch that I made, there actually wasn't that much fat. So I just put it in the fridge until it cooled. Now I'm going to transfer it into quart freezer bags for the freezer. I freeze it in two cup portions because that's what most of my recipes call for, but you can freeze it in whatever quantities you like. You can see the hard fat on top. This batch didn't actually have very much fat, which was nice. If it's a lot of fat, sometimes I will skim quite a bit of it off um, and just leave a little bit for the flavor. So I'm just going to, again, use that two cup Pyrex measuring cup and scoop two cup portions and put them into those bags. I'm using those green things are just Ziploc bag holders. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They're super helpful for projects like this um, or if you're doing like freezer meals or pretty much trying to get anything into Ziploc bags. <laughs> they're nice to have and they're adjustable so they can fit like sandwich size all the way up to gallon size, which is really nice. So I'm just writing the date and that it's chicken broth. And then I also write up in the corner, I write two cups so that I know that they're in two cup portions um, just in case for some reason someone else needs to thaw and use the chicken broth. <laughs> They'll know how much is in there. And then at this point it was getting a little bit low to like scoop out with my measuring cup. So I just used a ladle to um, measure that into the measuring cup. And then from this batch, I was able to get, let's see, two, four, six, eight. I think I was able to get like 10 cups, 10 or 12 cups of broth, which is quite a bit. And so I just stick them in that little nine by nine pan. As you can see, I just lay them flat and that's helpful in case any of your bags leak, which I feel like every time I make broth, I have one that leaks at least a little bit. And so I just keep them in that Pyrex dish so that if there is any leaking, it stays contained to the dish and doesn't get all over my freezer. And it also helps the bags to lay flat. So that way when I'm freezing them, they stay flat, which is nice because then when they're completely frozen, I kind of use, I store them like vertically so that they're kind of almost filed in my freezer drawer, which is really helpful to help them be easy to grab. And also when they're long and kind of thin like that, it makes it a lot easier for them to thaw. So today I'm going to be showing you the recipe for white chicken chili. This is one of our family's favorites. So I'm going to quickly show you the ingredients and then show you how easy it is to make. So you're going to need some half and half or whipping cream or you can use milk. Half and half is just what I happen to have today. And sour cream, you won't need these until the very end. And then we're going to need about a can of chicken broth, which is about like one and three quarters cups. I have these um, homemade chicken broths that I froze in two cup portions. So I'm just going to use all of that and it'll just be a little bit more soupy, which is fine. You're going to need one can of, um, some kind of white bean. And if you really like a more beany chili, the original recipe calls for two cans. We don't like too, too many beans. So I usually just do one can. You're going to need some garlic. You're going to need eight ounces, like two of the smaller four ounce cans of green chilies. I just have one of the bigger, bigger ones. It's seven ounces. So not quite as big as two of the smaller cans, but it's what I have, so I'm gonna use that. And then you're also gonna need salt, oregano, cumin, an onion, and then chicken. I'm just using some chicken thighs. These can be frozen um, to start cooking it, or you can do it from thawed as well, whichever is easiest. Also, I'm gonna be doubling this recipe today um, so that I can take some to my cousin and the ingredients that I, the ingredients that I just told you is just for one recipe. So I'll make sure that you have the one single recipe down in the description box. Um, so if you see me adding like multiples of things, 
it's probably because I'm doubling the recipe. So here you can see I'm using some of that frozen chicken broth. When I'm using it in the crock pot, lots of times I'll just stick it in there frozen and then it will melt <laughs> as the crock pot's heating up. Um, lots of times I don't actually thaw it all, thaw the chicken broth all the way if I am needing it for something. I'll just stick it in the crock pot or on the stove or whatever and have it kind of melt as I'm doing the rest of the cooking. So um, I added my chicken broth in here and then I added my frozen chicken, which will thaw and cook just fine if you leave it in the crock pot all day. And then I'm chopping up an onion. And like I said, I in this video, I am doubling the recipe so that I could take some to my cousin. So that's why if it's like double the amount of the ingredients that I said at the beginning, <laughs> that's why. So I chopped up my onion, I added my salt, um, especially because I didn't salt this batch of chicken broth. It's really important to make sure that you are adding salt to your recipes. And then I'm adding some of the spices and the garlic. And this recipe will be linked down in the description box below if you want to see the original recipe. And then I'm adding the green chilies. And sometimes even when I'm just making a single batch, I'll double the amount of green chilies because I really like them in, the, in this chili. Um, but you don't have to. And they're not spicy, so they don't add a lot of spice. They just add a really good flavor if you're worried about like spices for um, if you're have like young kids or something it's not a spicy a spicy chili both my girls really like it and they are five and one so here i am just draining i'm going to drain and rinse the beans you can use whatever kind of white beans you like um, i think i'm using great northern in this recipe i think those that's generally what i have on hand there's little isla you can see her little head wandering around so i'm just going to add those and put the lid on and then cook it on low for about six to eight hours crock pot soup I'm going to be showing you today is one of the easiest cheapest potato soups ever but it is one of my favorites and is super super good so what you need for this recipe is about six to eight potatoes these ones are a little bit small so we'll just make a smaller batch of soup but everything in this recipe is super super adaptable and adjustable to make kind of however much you want so about six to eight potatoes um, an onion garlic and then about four to six cups of chicken broth, depending on how soupy you like it or how big of a batch that you're making. Um, this is just my homemade chicken stock, chicken broth from rotisserie chicken carcasses, but you can also use bouillon is what I've also used a lot in the past, or the canned kind or the boxed kind, whatever you like. So you'll need those things at the beginning, and then at the end, you're gonna add in some milk or half and half. I just happen to have half and half on hand today, so that's what I'm going to be using. So here I am um, peeling and I'm gonna be dicing the potatoes. There's little Isla in the background. She's always under my feet <laughs> as I'm trying to cook. We do have child locks on our cabinets, but she is back there. You can still, they're like the latch kind. And so you can still open them a little bit of the way. And so she recently discovered that she can open up the cabinet doors part partially. And so she was opening up that door to see what exactly was inside. So I'm just peeling the potatoes. Um, like I said, you need about six to eight of them. It just depends on how big of a soup you wanna make. Um, it's really nice because this recipe is super, super adaptable and you can make a large quantity or a small quantity just depending on however much you want. Um, if you are adapting this, basically all you need is however many potatoes that you want and then you want your chicken broth to be enough to, oh, there goes Isla, she knocked over the tripod. <laughs> because she was trying to help as you can see her cute little hand trying to grab the potatoes so like i was saying if you're trying to adapt this you can use however many potatoes that you want and then you just want to make sure that your chicken broth um, is enough to cover the potatoes as they're cooking and then at the end um, when you're mixing it all up and you're adding the milk and stuff you can just kind of add as much milk as you want to make it as creamy as you want it's a super super adaptable super creamy super easy recipe and then i'm also adding an onion as well i really like the onion flavor so i always tend to add a little bit more onion um, if you don't love the onion flavor, you can, or if you don't love like onion chunks, <laughs> um, you can use onion powder if you want or dehydrated onion. Onion, I use that sometimes if I don't have a fresh onion on hand. And we're going to be blending, like using an immersion blender for the soup at the end. So it doesn't really matter how chunky um, your things are because we're going to make it all smooth at the end. Here I'm adding some garlic. And then if you want it to be a little bit chunkier, oh, so I'm going to put it on low for eight hours. You can cook it for longer too. It's just so that the potatoes get soft. So here I am with my immersion blender and this is how we're going to make it nice and smooth. 
If you don't have an immersion blender, I didn't have one for years um, while I made this soup and I just used a potato masher to kind of mash it up. It doesn't get quite as like thick and creamy and velvety as if you use an immersion blender, but if you like like a chunkier potato soup, you can just use a potato masher or I've also used a meat masher sometimes uh, to kind of chunk up the potatoes instead of making it smooth. And then you can add about a cup of milk, start with about a cup of milk or half and half for cream or whatever kind of dairy product you have. You can also use non-dairy milk as well and just kind of mix that in until it gets to be the consistency that you like. The soup will thicken a lot as it sits. And so, especially as it sits in the fridge, it will thicken up. So um, you can add some milk to kind of thin that out as you're reheating it later. You can also add a few cups of shredded cheese in it if you want to, or you can top it with cheese we usually do both. I had a little bit of cheese that I just used whatever remnants I had left in my fridge for this. And then when we serve it up, I also like to top it with some cheese as well. So after all that's mixed in, you can just put it on warm or low for about another 30, for about another 30 minutes or so. And then you can dish it up however you would like. All of my family loves this. We just put a little bit more cheese on top and some sour cream. If you have bacon bits, that's really good. Or if you have green onions, we really like putting that on top of the soup as well. So now we're gonna be doing the sausage tortellini soup. You're going to need about five or six potatoes. You're gonna need about four cups of chicken broth. You're gonna need a pound of sausage that you cook, some half and half and some tortellini. You're also going to need some parsley and some salt and pepper as well and garlic. I forgot that in the first shot. <laughs> so here I am. I'm just going to be um, dicing the potatoes into about, you know, bite-sized pieces. I'm leaving the skins on. You can peel them if you want to, but I think the skins give a good texture in the soup. And we're not going to be mashing this in any way, so make sure that the bites of potato that you are chopping are going to be a good, like, bite size for, for eating. <laughs> so, and to start this recipe, we're just going to be dicing these potatoes and then adding our chicken broth on it. And we're going to be cooking that on low for about six to eight hours um, just to get the potatoes nice and cooked. And then at the end, we're going to add a lot of the other ingredients and kind of cook that for just a little bit longer. This is one of our favorites. This, again, is a soup that soaks up a lot of the liquid as it sits. So if you're eating this for leftovers, you would definitely will want to add additional milk or half and half or whatever to kind of make it more soupy or you can just eat it as kind of just like a meal. <laughs> That's what we do a lot of times too. So here I'm using that homemade chicken broth again. I just kind of ran it under some warm water to get it loosened up a little bit. And then I'm just kind of sticking it in. I also kind of cut down the side of the bags if I can't get it out very easily. And then I'm gonna add the spices just to make sure all of that can cook together and kind of help to season the potatoes. And then after that has been cooked, I'm going to add about two cups of milk. And I ran out of half and half, so I had to, had to add a little bit more of regular milk, but you can use whatever kind of milk you want. And then I'm going to add the cooked and drained sausage. I just used breakfast sausage, but you can use whatever kind you want. And then I'm going to add an entire, there's Isla's hand again. <laughs> and then I'm going to add this entire package of tortellini. I got this one from Sam's Club and you can use less, but definitely use the refrigerated kind of tortellini because it, it just cooks a lot better. If you do use dry, I have used dry um, in the past and you just need a lot more liquid in your soup for it to cook the right way. And you'll need to let it cook for a little bit longer. So back here, we're just going to cook it for another 30 minutes to an hour just to get the tortellini cooked through and the soup thickened up. And as you can see, I probably could have even added a little bit more liquid because this is pretty chunky and not a very liquidy soup right now. <laughs> um, but that's also good for my girls. They like it a little bit chunkier. It's a little bit easier for them to eat. So thanks for watching and please comment below if you have tried any of these soups before, if you have a favorite soup recipe. I'm always looking for new soup recipes to try because that's one of my favorite foods. So if you have one that you like, please comment it down below. Or if you've tried any of these, let me know how you like them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.